Welcome everyone to Steph's podcast. This is episode 65. I'm at 65 episodes wow. now. That's incredible. Um, I can't believe it's been that many episodes. I've learned so much along the way. Every episode is just like having another mentor for free, you know, who's like coming on and sharing their experience. And I get to learn so much every single episode. Um, and today we have a very special guest with a lot of experience, a lot of insight. His name is Gus Rodriguez. He is a broker and of course an ADU fanatic, and we'll get into that right now. But let me tell you guys a little bit about Gus. Gus is a dynamic and personable force in LA Metro market, re-owned for his resilience and expertise, even amidst economic fluctuations, which is something that I'd want to talk about, right? Especially in this type of market that we're in. With over eight years of experience in financial banking at Wells Fargo and more than 12 years working with prominent financial services companies such as Countrywide Home Loans and Balboa Insurance, Gus stands out as one of LA's top deal makers. Uh, one of my favorite things is Gus is bilingual in English and Spanish. Gus offers a wealth of knowledge and insight with a very diverse background. You know, when it comes to the ADU space, when it comes to the real estate space, he actually operates and owns a company and has many realtors that work under his uh, mentorship and guidance. And so he's also become a very good friend of mine. We work together with Homeplex and we'll talk about that. But I just want to take the moment to tell you thank you so much for making the time. I know how busy you are. I know you just got back from vacation. So I know, you know, you were telling me about your your fire hats that you were wearing yesterday <laughs> yeah. before. I know how it is. So I really appreciate you just taking the time to share knowledge with us today and hope that it resonates with somebody who's listening. So tell people, I gave you I gave you guys the um, the corporate bio, <laughs> right? Yeah. Tell people a little bit about Gus and how you got started in real estate. I know you came from the financial background, but no. what what led you to where you're at now? No, well, first of all, Stephanie, thank you so much. I'm super excited to be on this you know podcast with you as well. And you know, one of the the quotes I want to start off with is uh, you know one that I really you know follow a lot, and it goes. And I'm sure you've heard it, you know, when the student is ready, you know, the teacher will arrive, right? And I think, yes. you know, being a student in this industry, being a student in my past uh, uh, careers, um, you know, has been, you know, the secret to my success because I'm always, you know, you know, wanting to learn. Um, wisdom can come from anyone, you know, any age, shape or size, um, you know, wisdom is an amazing thing that we can capture because once you have it, you can't take it away, right? And it's something that we keep. You know, it's like the memories, you know, that you create when you are on vacation, when you're doing things. Those are the things that, you know, are priceless, that have no, you know, no price on that. But, you know, getting into real estate, I think, um, you know, when I when I take a look at my maybe the last, uh, you know, 30 years of my life. Right. I mean, I'm almost 50, you know, so I'm, uh, I'm you know, in that age group where, um, you know, I've experienced a lot, you know, in. We were one of those, um, you know, generations that have grown in so many different, um, you know, parts of history from, you know, from being born in an analog environment to a digital environment now from, you know, I, I still was able to uh, experience some of the eight tracks, the cassettes and CDs and kind of now where we're at as well. So I think that, you know, our generation, if you're somewhere between your 40s and, you know, or older, we have a lot of experience that we kind of bring to the new world. Um, you know, at an early age, um, you know, when I became a, a, a young father, I was 19 when I had my first kid and I had to go to work. You know, I had to make a decision of taking care of my family and, um, you know, and had to get a job. And one of the things growing up uh, was that I noticed a lot of my family were in construction and, you know, my deals. Uh, uh, that were doing, you know, that had the nice homes that were always coming home, you know, uh, full of white powder and, and they were dirty <laughs> and, uh, you know, just with the work boots, but they had the nice house. And, you know, every time I would ask my family, you know, what is it that you guys do? You know, whether they were a roofer or a contractor uh, or anything in the nature, I knew that that was a very promising type of career and that they made good money on that. So I was always intrigued as a young uh, you know, child, uh, and when it came to construction and understanding a little bit more about, you know, uh, real estate and, and the construction world. Um, 
So in my early career, like I was mentioning, you know, my very first job was working at um, Builders Emporium, which was a company like a Home Depot now, but just a lot smaller. And I really got interested in learning about building materials, you know, so and I think uh, back then uh, you were able to get a work permit at 16 years old. So I was able to get a work permit, you know, get into the workforce and understand, you know, that, um, you know, working uh, uh, and, and taking action on your own is the only way that you can actually constantly advance in life. And at an early age, you know, sometimes, um, you know, a lot of us are not born with a silver spoon in our mouth. So we got to figure life out and do what we have to do in order to survive. But throughout my career from Builders Emporium, um, I was able to also uh, at 19 years old, uh, once, you know, my wife got pregnant and I've been married for 30 years as well. So I think that's also another big you know, successful uh, a story that we can touch on a little bit because I think when you have a great team yes. in place, it allows you to grow even stronger as an individual because you got that support. But when I knew that I had to, you know, take action, uh, my very first job was at Home Depot, um, um, you know, at 19 years old, sorry, you know, so um, understanding the building material world, understanding what it takes to build a house, uh, do certain things really fascinated me. Um, you know, I gave about a good seven or eight years at Home Depot, was able to climb the ranks in that position from pushing carts to managing the plumbing department, the hardware, the building mm -hmm. material department. I got very involved in teaching classes. Uh, there's a lot of do it yourselfers and, you know, that people come to Home Depot. So we got very involved with that. Was able to open up a few stores along the way with Home Depot, anywhere from the San Fernando Valley to North Hollywood to the Hollywood area. So I really had got a lot of experience and understanding that through that process as well. I became a part time apprentice to a plumber. So I really understood, you know, the plumbing industry, um, you know, which taught me a lot as well because I was more hands on and I really wanted to understand, you know, what construction was all about. Um, throughout my career, you know, we fast forward about a good, you know, maybe 15 years later, um, you know, I still went, uh, like you mentioned, you know, I went through the ranks of climbing corporate America, but I still wanted to understand more of the ins and outs of what real estate was really about. Because to me, real estate is a huge umbrella that falls into everything I do now. And I think I, I prepped myself at an early age that made it very easy for me to transition into real estate. You know, Countrywide uh, was a huge company out here in Simi Valley that were, I was not a loan officer, but I would serve as the loans that were coming in. And I got to understand different products of how loans work, the different kinds of loans, uh, those interest only loans that created that huge downfall, you know, back in uh, 2007, I got to see all of that. Um, through that experience as well, um, I got to work with Balboa Insurance, which was a huge company uh, that, um, <clears throat> That was that had a lot of their hands on when um, New Orleans had the Katrina, um, mm. um, you know, um, you know, terrible, you know, tornadoes and hurricanes and everything that they went through. And um, it was one of the biggest disasters that I had to work with a lot of the people. So it really helped me understand how a homeowner's insurance work, flood insurance, um, all of the components of having the importance of having an insurance once you're a homeowner, because that's a huge asset that we all, you know, hold dearly. Um, through that process as well, um, you know, once I got um, a little bit more, you know, I, I always get that two-year itch. In, in two years, if I'm not advancing, uh, if I'm not getting a bigger raise, then I normally fire myself and go somewhere so I can keep growing. And growing. When, I got, when I got that little itch, that's when I decided to go into financing. And that's when I went into work to Wells Fargo. So to Wells Fargo, I think I did about eight to nine years working with them, but I also learned a lot. You know, this is where I really took that career and learned about financing, about credit, about equity. How does equity work? You know, what are the benefits of equity? Because even to this day and age, a lot of people don't know the benefits of what equity does for you, how you can gain equity, how you can leverage it. Um, so that really gave me a lot of experiences. And when I got you know, it took me a little longer to get out of Wells Fargo, but I think it was the perfect timing. Um, and I decided to leave that industry right when the short sale foreclosure market started to kind of dwindle down, you know, mm. and I'm like, OK, I think now it's time. 
And um, one day I just walked into my branch and I said, I quit. You know, um, it was a good paying career. Um, I love what I was doing, but I think that I hit a, a ceiling. Um, you know, sometimes politics, uh, a lot of things that happened within corporate America was very, um, you know, I wasn't really liking that. So I decided to go into real estate. And, you know, I came home one day and I told my wife, hey, honey, I just want to let you know I quit. Um, you know, I think she had a heart attack at that moment. And um, she's like, why? And I said, you know what? Because I think I'm better than this. Um, and the only way that I can grow, you know, after speaking to many of my very successful clients in banking, when I would ask them, you know, how did you become successful? How did you become to have what you have now? Mm -hmm. You know, and I got to see their bank accounts. I got to see their what they were doing and. I, I made so many amazing relationships and I met so many affluent people that were very humbled in, in sharing their success. But the number one answer, Stephanie, that I really loved and that really just, you know, made me make that decision in quitting was, well, I made my wealth through real estate. You know, that was a vehicle that I used to help me create wealth, whether it was buying properties, leveraging the equity, and then, of course, turning some of that money into opening businesses and opening restaurants, opening whatever it is that they own. But, um, you know, 90% of my clients who were very successful was because of real estate. And I said, well, I think that's is the direction that I need to go in, right? And look, in my first, uh, when I quit, um, you know, it took me about six months to get my license because I really wanted to see if this industry was for me, you know? Mm -hmm. So I put my head down put the blinders on, um, you know, I had a, a good friend who had already been in the business for about a good two years. So he was my mentor. And in six months, I did about 14 deals thinking that it was very low. Um, I was like, man, I only did 14. You know, how can I should be doing more? You know, I was uh, on about a four. You found out the average sales price. Yeah, <laughs> <was> like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, you know, even being like in a very, you know, because I wasn't licensed yet. So I was only getting about 40 to 60 percent of my splits. But I was right. bringing the buyers. I was bringing the sellers. And my uh, friend here was doing all of the back end work and stuff like that. But I made more money in six months than I ever did in Wells Fargo, like in two years combined. And I said, OK. I need to get my shit together and um, get my license, do it properly. And, you know, since then, you know, I've never looked back. Um, you know, one thing that I really regret is that I should have done this like many years before when I made the decision to get into real estate. But I think it was perfect timing. And a lot of my history that I just shared with you, I think, prepared me to come into this industry and really just take off flying, you know, and. Um, you know, I've never looked back. I will never go back and work a nine to five anymore because I know my worth. I know my value. And I truly, honestly love helping people. You know, one of the, uh, you know, uh, things that I do every morning is always thank God for, you know, giving me another opportunity and being a servant, you know, to, to whomever, right? Whether it's my family, my clients. And that's one thing that I really pride myself with. But I think that, you know, my history that I just shared with you really prepared me into coming into the real estate world and you know in real estate now i'm going close to about 10 years in the real estate industry now but uh with boulevard now my current company that i've have open you know we've been uh, in business for seven years as well so within a three to four year time frame i was able to really understand the real estate industry i was able to do 30 40 deals on my own i was able to find some great mentors in this industry that i look for and you know, I just shut up and listened, you know, like, hey, this is what you need to do. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. Just get yes. to work. Right. I mean, you will always, you know, perfect your style, but you take from the people that have had success and just be a student and, and, and listen to what they're telling you. And, um, you know, I knew that uh, going far in this business, you had to go with the right people because doing it alone you can go fast but if you want to go far you know you gotta align yourself with good people in the industry and you know that's something that i really pride myself on you know stephanie that um good partnerships uh you know finding good mentors you know making your own wise decisions depending on you know what information you're gathering allows you to keep advancing in this business and you know so now being in real estate and as you know um, our market changes uh, so much. And I think ever since COVID, um, it's just been constantly changing on a 
you know, daily, monthly, quarterly basis that it's it's all over the place. But if you're right. well prepared and you've weathered some storms, um, you know, we adapt and we embrace change and um, we go with the punches and make the best out of it. But I feel um, like the, the real estate market since COVID is changing as quickly as you were changing jobs as well every two years. Right. But yeah, you said so much there. And one thing that I want to touch on, I'd made some notes. So first of all, I didn't know all of this information about you, right? I, I knew you had been in it long enough, but I didn't know the background. And now understanding everything that you've been through and every hat that you wore, it's no wonder why you're successful and you know why you are where you are now. And I would say, you kind of said it too, but just to let you know, it's all perfect timing, right? It happened when it was supposed to. And I think you had to go through that. Like it took me, you know, I started in real estate when I was 21 or something like that at, in 2011 as a receptionist at a Century 21 office yeah. in, in South Bay. And then from there, you know, it's been over 10 years in real estate and P and I'm still young, I'm 34, but you know, I feel like I've, I've put, I've wore so many hats from TC to, you know, real, realtors assistant for different teams. I've scaled teams. I've been a buyer's agent. I've been the listing agent. I've, you know, I've done all these different hats that I think is what's helped me in this space, just like you have with the construction, you know, understanding the, the, the builder standpoint, understanding the financing. Oh my God. I've sat in at least, at least 500 consultations with, with the yeah. lender. So at that point, you really understand the financing and how to structure a deal. You understand how to vet a client, how to coach realtors to vet their clients and what questions to ask. And you can almost kind of pre-qualify a client at that point just by asking the right questions and, and guiding them, right? So I think everything that you've done is it was part of your story and your journey, and you had to go through that. One thing I do want to touch on, though, is you and I are both Latinos, right? And one thing I always like to talk about is the mindset between, you know, somebody who was privileged or had all these uh, resources or had, I think, privilege even in having, you know, an open mindset. I think for us as Latinos, I don't know how you were raised, but for me, it was very difficult for me to get, you know, claps about, you know, wanting to leave the nine to five world and go to the entrepreneurship world and try yeah. to better myself and grow and, you know, do personal development in my journey. That was not something that that was celebrated, whether it was from my parents or my family or my cousins or the carnitas asadas yeah. or even my ex-husband. Right. Like if we're being honest, part of my divorce was the fact that he wasn't going to accept, you know, the journey that I wanted to take. And so I think touching on just how I'm always so grateful for my awareness and knowing that because I think a lot of Latinos, we struggle with that. We care yeah. too much about what people think, even what our spouse thinks. Lucky for you, you know, your wife, I see how much you guys are a team, right? So it's very important that your significant other, let alone your family, right? Like support what you're doing. But when they don't, that's when you really are like tested, right? And I, I think I wasn't. And so I had to make a decision at that point, right? My environment matters. So I need I needed to change my environment as much as I was used to it. And as much as I, I went through my own phase of feeling guilt and feeling, you know, like I wasn't making the right decisions because you're kind of in your own world. But how did you navigate through that? I, I'm assuming your wife had a lot to do with being a cheerleader and helping you and being a good support system. Yeah. But how did you navigate through it as a Latino, leaving the nine to five corporate, comfortable world that we're taught to stay in, right? Like, no te vayas a cambiar de trabajo, estás a gusto ahí, tienes, tienes, tienes los beneficios, tienes esto, estás estable. Like, don't get out of that comfort zone, right? How did you, you know, overcome that? And, and what sort of limited beliefs did you have through that time in your life? You know, you were also young. So, like, how did you, yeah, how did you get through that? You know what, Stephanie, it's, 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 you know, it, it, and I'll, I'll probably get emotional with it because, you know, sometimes I think you got to go through certain things in your life to really, you know, and, and as long as you can understand it and really read the signs and really feel it here is when it changes you. Right. And like you said, for Latinos, it, it can be very difficult because of everything you just mentioned. And, and unfortunately or fortunately, that's just the way our culture is. But, you know, we got to have those breakthroughs. We got to be able to get past that and 
you know, and, and, and have that support system, whether it's God, whether it's your wife, whether it's your mom, you know, you got to find the right people around you to help you do that. But at a very young age, I think I was at 14 years old, you know, um, my mom, you know, she was uh, for the most part, you know, we, I'm one of five brothers. So she got to raise five kids and she did everything she could to keep food on the table, uh, a roof over our head. And, you know, I'm very grateful for that. Um, I think it was at, at 14 years old that I was waiting for my mom to come home um, and she worked overtime. You know, I just didn't know what was going on. And, you know, at that moment, you know, I felt a, a, a sense of abandonment for a short amount of time because, you know, again, you know, she was a single mom and, and, and we were struggling at a, at a certain point in our life when we, um, you know, came back to the United States. I was born and, and raised here for the most of my life, but there was a point in our life where we went to Mexico. I did most of my elementary in Mexico, which I really love because it connected me, you know, with my roots, understanding schooling there is a lot different, but coming back to the United States was a readjustment again, because I came back right around sixth grade. Um, but, you know, that one night, um, you know, honestly, just looking out the window, it's already like six, seven o'clock, mom is not home, and I'm like, okay, this is it. If I want to get anywhere in life, I can't depend on anyone. It's got to be on my own. You know, if I want to get my own car, if I want to get whatever I want, you know, you know, God bless my mom for everything that she does. But I, I, I couldn't depend on anyone to give me what I wanted in life. So in that moment, I made a decision that I had to take charge on myself and not care what people thought about me, you know, whether it was my mm -hmm. uncles, my cousins, my friends. Um, I had to take all of that just out of my head and, and just go hard in what I truly believe was right. You know, A, first following the golden rule, you know, believing in God, being a good person, um, not allowing people to change who I was as an individual and just stuck with that, you know. And, you know, like I had mentioned everything about my, my history, you know, at 16 years old, that's when I, the minute I knew that I can get my uh, my permit to drive and my permission to work, I, I went at it because, again, I could not depend on anyone to give me what I wanted in life. And I, I bet you're so grateful for those moments now, looking yeah. back. Right? Because if, if you hadn't been pushed up against a wall like that to, at 14 years old, realize, like, nobody's going to come and save you. You got to do this shit on your own. I think there's such a blessing in that because had you been handed everything to you, you probably wouldn't be as grateful or who knows where you would have end up, ended up at, right? You probably would have ended up in a comfortable spot with a regular job and, you yeah. know, kind of live life casually like most people do. I think most people sort of live their life that way. They don't really question what they're doing, why they're doing what they're doing. You know, I recently went to Danny Morell's event and yes. I was messaging you when I was there. It was very empowering to just see a room of other people who are not only self-aware, but they're wanting to do better for themselves and their 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 generations to come. Right. Like I've shifted my mindset in so many different ways and I've unlocked so many unlimited beliefs you know, as a, as a Latina in, in the business space, in the construction space, in the real estate space, now in the ADU world, right? I'm sort of uh, paving this path on my own that has empowered me to just keep doing that. Like keep, keep carving out my own lane and not comparing myself to others, not caring what other people think, because it's not about anyone. It's about you and yourself and your yeah. journey with you know, with God or whoever you you praise in yourself and becoming better. I think we all have this itch to always want to grow and always want to be comfortable with change. But sometimes we're we're scared of that. Right. And I've had many pivotal moments in my life where I'd rather stay comfortable, but I've pushed through. So, you know, those breakthrough moments are huge. And I think having the right people around you is 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 so important. You know, it one is. of the other things you touched on, too, was um, I wrote down here equity. So yesterday I posted a video on Instagram. I had a call from this lady in Spanish and she was telling me that she's like, well, quiero hacer un ADU, pero no quiero refinanciar la casa, you know, because she didn't want to refi her house because she, she has a two and a half percent. And I started explaining to her, you know, that's most people right now, anybody with the rate under 5%. And then I was just having a conversation with her. She didn't know what a, a HELOC loan was. She didn't even know how you could leverage your equity, right? So that was one thing that 
made me realize like, okay, there's such a lack of knowledge in our Latino community. And I know that so many of us have, you know, parents and uncles and aunts and people in our family that, that really just lack the knowledge. They don't understand how they can leverage the ADU play, which we'll get into right now. But yeah. it, it, it yeah, it kind of brought up that awareness. And I'm like, I need to do more content in Spanish and use my voice to really share this with 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 our own people, right? Because our own people are sometimes the most stubborn. But I think if they hear it from somebody that looks like them, talks and walks like them, it may res resonate with them and they may be more, you know, opt to just being open to the idea. And so that's one of the things that I'm going to be on a mission for <laughs> this yeah. week is putting more content in Spanish because I realize I keep saying it, but I'm like, there's really a, a need for it in our market uh, for a lot of our Latino communities. And I think that's one of the things that brings me a lot of passion. I see it in your in your content as well. You're very proud to be a Latino. And I think that that's important that we're proud of where we came from. However, we didn't let everything in our culture hold us back from doing the things that we wanted to do, right? Yeah. And I think that that's an important balance to have, right? Like it, it's it's being okay with with taking a little break from that and changing your environment to better yourself. So then you can come and help these people, help your own community. Um, another thing that you talked about was, you know, just talk to me about the brokerage side now and how you coach your agents. I know that you're very humble about it on here, but guys, this guy has a brokerage and he has like, you know, how many agents do you have in your office now? We're about 89 agents, three offices now, and we just mm -hmm. keep growing, you know. And, and you I know, think one thing I will say, and for people to know how much of a student you are. So I, I spoke at the ADU Academy in February. Cole Peterson, who does the ADU Academy every year, uh, reached out to me and said, hey, can you um, teach the real estate portion of the course? And I was like, sure. I was even having limited beliefs about that. I'm like, they're calling me to go do this. And I'm like, who? I'm not even a broker. You know, what, what, what is this? And so I felt a limited belief, but then I, I snapped right out of it. When you're self-aware, you kind of pick up on these uh, self, you know, negative talks that you have. Yeah. And I was like, no, I'm going. So I show up, you know, I did the academy. And then I think it was like a couple of days after that you called me and we had exchanged numbers and i met a lot of people that day so i didn't put a face to the name but yeah. called me basically asking for you know for guidance or like feedback or insight on how do i navigate through my consultation with clients when it comes to adus you know and how do i monetize it and you had all these questions and then when i started asking you questions you're like yeah well i have a brokerage i got about 100 agents and i do this and i was just like wow and this guy's calling me right to ask for insight and feedback so i think being a student of the game yeah. is 100 what's going to keep you in there you know being able to adapt being able to be innovative and being able to learn like I'm a student of the game all day. And I think that's one of the qualities that most people tend to oversee in leadership. You know, leadership is not about you feeling superior to those, you know, under you or or vice versa right. or them being inferior to you. Being in leadership is really like learning all the time because you're the one who's really trying to help them grow and pull them to a higher vibration and a higher, you know, just a higher level and standard that they don't even see within themselves. But yeah. in order to do that, you have to be a student. So I just want to speak to that too. Right. Yeah. And and then maybe you can share too, like what made you want to just reach out and, um, and tell people kind of how that went and where we're at now and how we're able to work together. No, for sure, Stephanie. And look, uh, uh, just to touch a little bit on some of the things you've made comments on, like, you know, wearing multiple hats, right. And, and finding those leaders in our, in our, in our lives. And, you know, one of the people that, um, you know, people, again, who uh, grew up uh, around my time frame, um, you know, a lot of us were very big fans of, of, of different people. One of the, you know, one of the icons that I really looked up to that I really loved their tenacity and their, um, you know, just the way they would work. Um, you know, I've never got to meet, the, uh, meet this individual in person, which I really regret because I had an opportunity once, uh, you know, when I was a partner with Danny Morell. You know, you mentioned mm -hmm. Dan Morell and you mentioned wearing many hats, but one of my big, big, you know, people who I really was inspired by was, you know, this gentleman behind me, which is Kobe Bryant. You know, Kobe Bryant, you know, going through his career, understanding the tenacity, having that Mamba mentality, 
you know, really, I think embedded, he embedded that in so many people around the world, right? Not because being an amazing athlete, but a great father, you know, supporting the game, you know, being consistent, all of that was something that I grew up with a lot. And I know that, um, you know, one of the hats that I do love to wear, it's this one here. And this is the, uh, you know, it's called the, the villain. And it's a Kobe <laughs> Bryant actual brand. And in the inside of the hat, it says, uh, you know, you channel the villain, but you unleash the hero. So he was a, a hero and a villain at the same time, right? But it's 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 the wording behind and the mentality that he had. So he was always known as a villain because, um, you know, again, he 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 embraced that and he he knew that he was going to have a lot of haters, but he didn't care. He knew that eventually, you know, he would embrace all of that and just unleash, you know, the the person that he was. You and know, I wearing... think with it, with the players that he had, you know, he was a villain within the team, right? Because he yeah. wanted the people to be held accountable to a higher standard. And he was kind of showing them like, hey, I'm out here at 4 a.m. Like, what are you doing? Right. I'm out here training two to four hours more than you are. What are you yeah. doing? So I feel like with the team, he really played the villain role. But I saw an interview recently where they were asking um, Vanessa, his his ex-wife or wife, you know, she she was talking about how he, he would go to games injured and he would play through those games. And so she asked him, she was like, why do you play through the games like injured? You know, you shouldn't be doing that. Like you should take some time to rest. And he was like, no, I actually need to play through these injuries because there's people who have saved money their whole life to come to this one game. You know, there could be a parent that's bringing their son to this one game this one time. Like, that's probably their first and last time that they get to come to a game and I have to give them the best experience. And I was like, damn, that's like him thinking way above himself, right? Yeah. And really pushing towards his purpose. And I got to admire that so much. I have a poster of him too in our, in our living room. So right. the Mamba mentality is 1000%. Like, yeah. yeah, I'm on board with that. Now that was deep. I was like, damn, for you to think <laughs> ahead, you know, it, it goes back to realtors, right? Like, why should you do script, script practice every single day and practice your conversations, your skill set, your communication skills for that one opportunity that you're going to have so you can be ready for it when it comes, right? Completely, completely. Yeah. And look, and then when I when I wait, when I do wear my, you know, my real estate hat, right? You know, because this yeah. is my other hat that I wear, you know, the the Kobe Bryant hat. Um, it's, it's constantly on me. It's something that I grew up with. And I think this is how uh, you know, leading into Boulevard, you know, uh, it's it's something that I really, um, you know, I thank Danny Morell for, you know, mm. so um, Danny Morell was, uh, you know, as I got uh, maybe two, three years into my real estate career, it's like, okay, I, I, I need to take it a step further, you know, what do I need to do in order to take my career to the next level? So, you know, I, I, I looked, researched, um, got to meet Danny at a NAREP event, you know, events that he really didn't like, but he was invited as a guest speaker and just certain things that he did and said just clicked. And I said, great. H how do I get to meet this person? How do I really get to get in front of him? You know, and this kind of leads into how I met you, how I met other people. But sometimes you just got to put it in the universe, get in front of these people, uh, and, you know, putting, you know, value over cost sometimes, because sometimes people will be all oh, cost too much to go see this thing or go listen to this person speak. And, and that's when your mentality is just like a broke man's mentality. Um, so at one point, you know, I live in the San Fernando Valley um, and Danny was in Rancho Cucamonga. Um, so my excuse was he's too far for me to go learn from him. The minute I took that excuse out of the way, it's when my career honestly just catapulted and exploded. And I told my wife, look, I'm going to make a sacrifice. So I am going to wake up at four, you know, you know, four or five in the morning so I can mm -hmm. get ready and make the drive to Rancho Cucamonga early enough so I can beat the traffic, be at his trainings, learn the scripts, understand what this guy is doing and teaching and just go from there. So I completely did that for about six months, you know, went there, got to meet Danny. We got very personalized to the point where I told Danny, we got to bring your culture to the Valley because we're missing this over here. And you know what? He um, he believed enough in me that we opened up like a small, I swear, I swear to God, like the, probably the size of my office right now. You know, like, I don't know, it's just like 40 square foot office and stuff. And it was just two or three of us cold calling, you know, building the culture, aligning myself with Danny. And eventually we became partners where we opened up a, 
5,000 square foot office with 40 agents. And then we opened up another one in Palmdale. So we grew to almost 100 agents, you know, under his leadership, you know, under his coachings, his trainings, his wisdom. Um, he was a big student also of Mike Ferry. So we had, you know, Mike Ferry coaches also mm -hmm. showing me certain things. And our business, as you you know, and a lot of realtors, it can be a very tough business, very cutthroat as well. There can right. be a lot of uh, power tripping, uh, a lot of haters, uh, you know, greed. Gets a lot of away. ego. Mm -hmm. A lot of that, right? And you know, Danny had um, had a lot at stake actually when uh, when we were working together. Because besides now being partners here in the valley, he had about a few other partners out in his side of town and he had about a good 300 plus agents and what he was a very um well you know how he is man and, and yeah and, and we grew quick um unfortunately something happened where um i had to leave and, and part ways uh from danny not because of him but because of other individuals that i don't want to get into that yeah you know, yeah that shut a door in my space but um you know a few years later uh passed and I connected with Danny once he went into what he's doing now, you know, being the guru of, 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 of you know, this amazing, um, you know, uh, trainings that he's doing he's at a different teaching, level. Um, he's teaching health, spirituality, finances, and, um, and relationships, yeah. which I thought was pretty dope because when I went to his seminar, you know, you talked about the cost, right? And for a second, I was like, oh, you know, $1,000 for this. And I got a, well, it was here in Miami. But I was like, you know what? We're going like, let's go see what this is about. And so the four days that I was there, I got a lot of good takeaways on business, you know, and a lot of it. I've been to so many real estate seminars, so I, I got it right away. I'm like, OK, here he's referring to this, you know, on the finance stuff, on the relationship stuff. But the um, the vibrational conversations about vibrations and frequencies, really, it can be applied to real estate. Right. When I when you first get started as a realtor or even in business in real estate, right, whether you have a brokerage or, you know, even in the ADU space, I'm learning too. everything applies the same. When you're first starting, if you have a scarcity mentality, you're kind of working with whoever you're just like, give yeah. me a shot. I will work with whoever. But at some point, you know, there's a shift when you have enough confidence, enough skill set, and you've kind of elevated yourself to a higher vibration where you're no longer taking that, you know, that low level mentality or like broke mentality because you want to attract better clients, better agents, better transactions. You can really like dictate that and put it out into the universe. So what I like is that he's also teaching the business aspect of it. It's right. not just like who, who, who guru, like spirituality stuff and let's meditate and do breath work all day. Like that stuff works, but how do you implement it in real life? Right. And yeah. how does this translate with your relationship with money? So I had a lot of mental unlocks of, um, of my relationship with money because it all goes back to how we were raised, right? Yes. If you were raised yeah. that you couldn't make a certain amount of money because the money's bad or, you know, te vas a creer, you know, and, and you're going to attract more money, more problems, like all these limited negative beliefs that are taught to you from an early age, you know, then you kind of, you, you carry that on. So at some point you also have to analyze like, what is my relationship with money? So we did a lot of money exercises and that was really dope. But um, but yeah, I mean, that's so cool to know, like the, you know, that you guys had a relationship. I know there's a lot of people in the real estate space that have shared, you know, um, either offices with him or realtors. And I know how the real estate industry is. As you said, it's very cutthroat. But there's a couple of us like you and I who are part of that 20 percent of legit people that are in it for the long yeah. run. And and somehow in that we met and we attracted each other, you know, and that's how we, we both ended up connecting. So, no, definitely. And, and you know what? And I, I really would love to say no thank you to Danny because, you know, he did uh, allow me to break through in certain ways, you know, as an individual, as an owner, as a as a broker, co coach and trainer in this industry that if it wasn't for that learning and that experience that I had with Danny, then I, I wouldn't have created this company that I have now. And you know, a few years later passed and I said, Danny, you know what? At, at, at one point I was a little upset because of what happened, but he's like, Gus, this needed to happen in order for you to be where you're at now, you know? Mm. And, and, and I said, you're totally right, you know? And, yes. and that was an experience that I took and I embraced it and I didn't let it define me, but I let it, you know, just advance me and, and be more aware of things, you know, in, in this industry, right? But it allowed me to 
open up Boulevard and align myself with really good partners. And, you know, as time went by, you know, and then I ended up wearing my other hat, which was, you know, this is my, uh, my construction hat, my ADU hat, right? <laughs> and again, yeah. we wear, I brought many hats to kind of share with you because it yes, really is like a mm -hmm. different industry, right, that we work in. And this is more of the, you know, the hat. Uh, and this is a company that um, a gentleman that uh, helped me with my first ADU uh, process. Um, you know, this is right before COVID that it opened up my eyes of what the potential of ADUs can do for our industry. And we were going through a lot of changes in our time that um, when I first uh, did my first flip as an ADU, not knowing what an ADU was, um, you know, two years later, I aligned myself with Rafael, who we have Arcit Construction Services, and we just provide, you know, the services, the consultations to really help people expand on their real estate. And I think this is when, um, you know, the passion and to understanding more led me to you, led me to connecting with, uh, you know, finding the right people in this industry that were passionate about it, that I felt that I had maybe the same kind of common, you know, trends and goals with. And of course, you know, I ended up going to the ADU Academy, uh, got to meet you. I got to see a, a lot of the things that you were doing, that Homeplex was doing, and I needed to take my game to a different level. You know, I needed to bring more value and benefit to my agents as well. But the only way to do that was for me to apply myself, understand it, you know, be hands on. I will never ask anyone to do something that I haven't done myself. You know, uh, a leader, you know, swims laps with their team. They're in the trenches. And, you know, we coach from experience and from a good place. You know, so when you ask me that question, you know, how, you know, I, I was led to you and how I coach my agents is from experience and from doing it myself, from having my own failures and my own successes as well. And I think that's the only way that you can really coach someone, teach someone, because you experienced it yourself. You've gone through major victories or major defeats that have defined who you are now. And, you know, I love to share that. If somebody's willing to listen, I'll give you my time. I don't have a problem with that. I do value my time a lot more and I ask people to schedule time with me. Yes. Let's make an appointment because, you know, our time is valuable, man. And that's our more important asset that I tell all of these agents, you know, if you're going to come to the office and waste time, then just stay home. You know, you value the. I think you, know, you have to set if you value your time, other people will value your time. Yeah. I had to learn that even after the Danny Morell event. You know, he's like, I don't do, you know, consultations for free. So when I came back from that event, I was like, OK, that's another thing I'm changing. I'm going to start charging for consultations, because yeah. if, if I charge for a consultation, my limited belief was. Well, they're not going to want to work with me because I'm charging. And then I switched that to, well, I value my time enough so that if somebody is willing to pay me $150 for an hour or 30 minutes of my time to explain the whole ADU process to them, they're going to walk away with so much more than $150 in value. But here was the switch for me. I was like, if they don't have $150 to pay me for my time for that hour, then they don't even have money for the ADU. So who are we kidding here? You know what I mean? Like, so it helped me filter out and set a higher standard for myself because if I don't value my time, nobody else will. And that, that was something that I struggled with even till last year, right? I was still doing a lot of the consultations for free, speaking at events for free, doing a whole bunch of stuff for free. Cause I was again, thinking like, oh, I'm going to miss out on this client or this opportunity when now I've switched it to, I have the leverage, I have the skill set. I am the one that can provide, you know, some value to these people. And, um, and I want to do it with the right people and be intentional about it. One of the things that I did want to touch on is I'll give you my take on brokerages and where I think we are in the brokerage world. Um, I'm not a broker myself, but I've worked for different brokers. And I'd say that brokers are just like escrow companies, just like HOA management companies or HOAs in general, super outdated. They're like the DMVs of the world in real estate for those of you who aren't in real estate, okay? Super outdated, but there's these few brokers out there like Gus and you know ADU brokers who I recently interviewed, my good friend Andrew, very few handful of brokers who are actually thinking outside the box and are like, you know what? this brokerage old model is very broken, right? And uh, when, when EXP came around, it sort of innovated a little bit, but it's still very old fashioned in my 
and my thoughts, I'm just being yeah. real with, with the audience here. The brokerage world is definitely coming to some sort of change eventually. There has to be some sort of change with their fees, with, especially with the NAR settlement coming up um, and just the structure of how brokerages give value, right? 10 years ago, you gave somebody an office space and that was enough value and give them a couple trainings, you know, a month. And that, that was kind of setting them up for success at that point. I think now a good a brokerage company is not only teaching agents branding, self-branding, marketing, how to build their own brand, you know, along with everything else. But the, the, the next phase is also helping them with their skill sets that many times the, the brokerages don't teach because it doesn't benefit the brokerage. But in your case, you're really being super innovative about teaching your agents about the ADU play. Right. And I know that you went as far as taking the ADU Academy and you also took my course, which I'm super grateful for because I even got some of your feedback that I implemented in the course. Right. With pricing and a few other things, I got your feedback. But to say all this is what I'm saying is like when you choose a brokerage nowadays, you really got to have that you know, think outside the box mentality, because most brokerages are sort of set in their ways are really trying to just make it through this yeah. market right now, we're being honest. And so I think the, the ones that are really going to stick around are the ones like your brokerage and with your mentality that are really innovative, and that they kind of see the dots. And you see right now, clearly that the ADU wave is here to stay. It's a play that needs to be leveraged by not only realtors, because eventually, you know, most realtors are going to need to understand development at a very basic level. It's going to be standard. Like if you, it's probably, they'll probably add, I bet you an ADU course in the, um, the, either the broker exam or the real estate exam, the salesperson exam at some point, right? Because that's where we're heading towards. And so that'll be the bare minimum for people, but you've already seen that and you've been working on that for the last couple of years. So I think, can you touch on that? Like what, what is your, sort of your mission now that you've taken the ADU Academy, you took my course, share some feedback on that and how you're going to show these, these realtors how to implement it out, you know, as boots on the ground when talking to buyers and sellers. Yeah. Well, like you said, you know, we're not innovative enough as a broker, as a company where people can come and grow, then we're going to die out because I a hundred percent agree with you. And I've been with the Remaxes, with the Keller Williams. I've Me been too. With the all of them <laughs> with the boutique brokers and i've been with you know amazing brokers like danny morrell so i've gotten a good feel of everything right and you know it, it was um it was a drive to vegas one day when i went with my, my my current business partners and said hey why don't we do our own brokerage why don't we do it our way and why don't we bring things that is missing in this industry and let's let's do something awesome for our agents and you know, we're going to call it Boulevard and we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And, you know, sure enough, it's we put it in the universe and, you know, my business partners have become family now. You know, we've grown together. I have seen our growth, you know, go from here to here. And it's been, you know, it's like we, we you measure progress, not perfection. Right. And when people try to go for perfection, it's like you, you, you set yourself up for failure. But mm -hmm. if you can measure the progress consistently, then you're going to see where you're going. Um, and by doing, um, you know, by constantly innovating myself and bringing that back to my office has been the success for Boulevard. And we are a very boutique office. I'm not trying to compete with the Keller Williams or a Remax because I'm not. I, that's a corporate brokerage world that I'm not going to do that. My agents get an amazing split. If they're on an 80, 85 or 90, they know exactly what their check is going to look like. I make sure that the minute we close our deal, they get paid within 24 to 48 hours. If you're doing uh, 10 or more deals, you get an office space, you've earned it, it's yours, it's free. Um, you know, when they have open houses, we set up their open house, we pick up the signs, uh, we provide the marketing, we provide uh, video filming, uh, marketing for free. We uh, uh, are teaching the power of branding yourself. Boulevard is just where you hang your license, but Let's promote Gus Rodriguez. Let's promote, you know, right. Team Believe or all of these people because you guys are the ones that are, you know, bringing the value to our clients. And we try to give more than what we, we want back in return. And we provide an environment and an engagement environment where people just love it. It creates loyalty. One of the biggest, I think, flaws in, in real estate is that there's no loyalty. You know, um, mm -hmm. everyone's always looking for that shiny object. What can I get for free? What can I get here? And if you have that mentality, then great, go. 
but I think we've done a great job in, in having tenure in our office. We have agents that have been with us since day one when we opened Boulevard. Some are going to come and go, and I get it. We're not for everyone, and um, I, I don't want to be for everyone. I don't want 100 agents. I'd rather have 20 solid agents that are coming in, know what they want. I bring them value, and you know how I bring in value is by aligning myself with people like yourself, like Danny Morrell, like Homeplex. And bringing that to my agents, you know, giving them all of the experience that I had in, in financing and Wells Fargo, teaching them about equity. And one of the one of the biggest things I'm teaching my agents right now, the best salespeople, the best advisors to talk to homeowners about how do you build equity? How do you make your your home uh, an asset instead of a liability? It's real estate agents, because we understand how do you build equity is you know, uh, of course, over time or adding square footage. And now by adding an ADU, adding a junior ADU, we know how to run comps. We know what it's worth now and what it can be worth when they are done with the construction. We're able to give them uh, uh, great information of how this garage can now, instead of making you zero dollars, can now make you up to twenty to thirty thousand dollars a year. Um, mm -hmm. I teach my agents about equity. You know, what is the best form of financing is borrowing from your equity, A, because you're paying back yourself. It's a tax write-off, you know, instead of, uh, uh, you know, you can write off a, a car loan, you can write off credit cards, you can write off other crap, but if you borrow from your home, that's a write-off, you know, and right. this is a way of using other people's money to create wealth. A lot of the richest uh, uh, people that I've made, real, you know, really great friends with is even though they may have two, three million dollars of liquidity in the bank, they still leverage their equities in their properties because of the benefits behind it. Right. The tax benefits. So by me educating my agents and understanding equity, understanding, um, you know, the equity in your mortgage, how, how to build equity in your property under uh, ha having them understand what a junior ADU is, what an ADU is, what does SB9 mean? What is this whole condens you know, condensation thing that like now you can sell it? My agents are now bringing more value to their clients. So they're not just saying, hey, you want to buy or sell? Let me help you build on your portfolio. Let me help you pull that equity out to go buy a property, to build an ADU and blah, blah, blah. So I think a lot of my, uh, my past experience aligning myself uh, with yourself, you know, when, when I saw your ADU play, I go, this is amazing. This is exactly what I was looking for to provide this value to my agents. You know, uh, you make it so easy to understand for people in our industry right now. Like you said, if they're not applying themselves and understanding about this whole ADU uh, 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 process and, and knowing that, you know, the uh, cost of living is so expensive, the scarcity of properties is really tough. Through COVID, construction stopped for so many, uh, you know, for three or four years. That's huge, you know. And we got, I mean, in LA County alone, we're over 10 million people. We need affordable housing. We need uh, 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 prices are just going out of the roof right now. That, um, you know, by me being able to help agents understand the ADU play, understand how we can leverage that, we're helping our communities. We're helping people afford. Uh, 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 an ADU that you might be able to sell for three to four hundred thousand, comparing it to seven, eight hundred thousand dollars right now that a lot of people can't afford. So I think um, combining all of that, constantly being a student, you know, uh, connecting with people like yourself, that allows me to bring that back to my brokerage. Um, I think the the right agents will value that, will see that, and I've created a system internally now that. You know, a, a simple system where now agents just email me the address and the, on the on the body of the email. Hey, my client has a garage and they're interested about doing X, Y and Z. Mm -hmm. I give them the info and we start a conversation. But what I'm teaching my agents is you're bringing more value now. You're not just trying to get them to sell or buy. You're really trying to get them to leverage their home as an asset and not a liability anymore. And I think that has really opened the eyes to a lot of my agents. Um, you know, I had the uh, privilege of doing seven projects now, um, you know, prior to uh, to being a, a member of Homeplex. Um, I, I've done two on my own. I've helped other seven people. A lot of the agents in my office have referred me business. So now they're helping customers buy a house. They get their commission check. 
they're helping them build an ADU. I give them a finder's fee or a commission for, for sending me business as well. And then they're helping clients repeat that process very easily. So my agents now are making money from sellers, buyers, and development. And it's more value. And then to repeat well. the process. Yeah. Because I think the realtors who will stay in it long term are the ones who just figure that exactly what you just said, helping acquire, helping build and then rinse and repeat and leverage their their equity. I mean, those two things, I don't really know of any brokerage teaching equity play and ADU play. None. Very rare. You know, none anywhere. I, I, this is the first time I hear that somebody's actually as a broker teaching agents how to leverage the equity play. And nobody talks about equity. And it's so important that as a realtor, you understand equity because you are an advisor. You know, one of the things that I like about Homeplex when I connected with Ari was that he he refers to us as an ADU advisor, you know, a consultant. We're not realtors. I, you know, the, the word sounds very salesy. I think if you are a real estate agent or real estate professional, think of yourself as an actual advisor for your clients. You have to learn how to analyze a portfolio. And in order to analyze a portfolio, you got to look at different components. What does the financing look like? What is highest and best you know, use of the property look like? So that's going to require for you to understand right. development. What is the exit strategy based on the client's needs and wants, right? Based on their motivation, what's going to be the best play for them? So there's about five or six different components that you as a real estate professional should know because they're looking at you for guidance, right? Whether it's a buyer or a seller, you know, like I told you, I had this conversation with this lady yesterday and she didn't even know that she could get a HELOC loan. She didn't know what that was, you know, and, and, she, and I was telling her in Spanish, I was like, I'm going to text you so you can tell your bank, this is what I want to apply for. But I think, you know, so many people don't understand how to do it because everybody's kind of working, you know, their regular jobs, living their life day to day. And so they're looking at us for guidance. We need to be the ones who to open up their mindset, streamline the entire process for them. And when you do that, that's going to speak for itself and they're going to refer people to you and you yeah. will build a book of business based on referrals, which is the ultimate goal yes. as a business owner, you yeah, know, not exactly. just as a realtor, as a business owner in general, like the highest conversion leads are those that are referred. They, they already trust you. Your work has already spoken on your behalf. So yeah, yeah. You, know, you really don't have to do much, like just shoot it. The ball's already been thrown your way. Right. And so I think that's so dope that you do that as, as you know, for any realtors who are listening to this that maybe want to tap into the EDU space, learn about development, really understand and grasp uh, the, the financing aspect of deals, reach out to Gus. You know, you guys can join yeah. his brokerage. Um, I like that you're super intentional about it because I agree with you. When, when I was um, managing that Century 21 office in South Bay, we had about 200 realtors in our in our roster and i was managing floor time at that time i don't know if you remember floor time but um we had like those old manila folders too back in the days and at that time there was about 200 agents in the roster i'd say about 20 of them were actually producing yeah. so it's not about quant you know the quantity it's about right. quality 100 yeah. percent. and when you attract people like yourself that are giving so much value the, you you're going to attract you know the, the exact same amount of um, of value, and you're really building these these realtors to have so much confidence in in their market. And I'm here for it too. If you ever need me to do a call or like you know we could do something like this for your office virtually, I'd be so down for people to really like appreciate where you're coming from as a broker yeah. and as a brokerage to be innovative in today's market. Like that's just not really seen in today's market. Like I said, most brokerages are hurting right now, just like escrow companies, just like HOA companies and trying to really, um, you know, just break even. And so they're not even thinking on how to be innovative. And here you are taking all these steps that are really going to just benefit you. I see you as one of the top ADU brokerages you know, in, in a very short period of time, just because you were adapt, able to adapt your student and you're kind of, you're doing, you're walking the talk, you know? So I really let appreciate me, that. Well, let me tell you, I mean, you're, you're a big part of that inspiration because, you know, I think when I reached out to you, I was going crazy because, um, you know, I, I could hear it in your voice that you wanted like all the answers to figure out a solution. <laughs> for your region. 
Yeah. And I was just like, I was just spitting it out. I was like, keep asking me, this is how I do it. And I remember <laughs> you asking me the questions and you were like, well, how do you do this? And how do you structure this? And I'm like, dude, I've been figuring this shit out on my own. I don't know. I don't even know how I'm doing it, but I'm doing it. <laughs> Yeah. But, but 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 I think that's what attracted me to you because you know you it, you're like me just the way to figure it out is just to get your hands dirty and get in there right and mm -hmm. you know after doing a few projects after having some successes and failures through you know working with different contractors contractors that leave you halfway contractors that uh, or not even just contractors but people in the construction business you know i mean that that i had to learn you know i mean i had a oh, look i'm reading this book i'm gonna send you one because i have an extra copy it's called um hiring secrets for trades and construction ah, my perfect. friend corley she wrote this book and i just had her on a podcast and we were talking about the, the construction space can be a whole other topic yes. right but there's yes. um there's a big age gap in the construction world and there's there, you know, older people are kind of set in their ways many times. And so it's very difficult to have people that are reliable, that are young, that are ambitious, you know, that actually want to do good in, in the construction space. So I get it. Another thing that I think with you was you kind of realized, you know, as a broker, finding good construction people, good architects and having people that do and say what they're going to do for a 12 month period for some of these ADU yeah. projects is hard to find. So when you reached out to me and I connected you with Ari at Homeplex, you kind of said, well, let me leverage Homeplex rather than me taking on all that stress because that's yeah. where I'm at, right? I don't want to be the one doing the project management, talking to the architect, talking to the contractor. That's not my goal. I'm just the one who puts the brand out there as an ADU consultant. And when people come to me, they fun they're funneled through me. I vet them out, I screen them out, and then I connect them with somebody who's hyper local, like Homeplex or ADU West Coast. Very few people that I that I vetted and that I, I appreciate how they work. I know that they mean well. And we we kind of we kind of cross-reference our brands and make we really care about yeah. how we're perceived in the marketplace. So I think you kind of learned that on too when you were talking to me you're like well how have you structured compensation and i'm like well i'm I'm kind of figuring that out but i did talk to homeplex and they have it structured this way and this is probably the best structure that i've seen for agents you know yeah. and then i told you about the course i'm like well i'm going to create a course on all the questions that have been asked from realtors you know again going back to making sure that i that I value my time, I found myself doing consultations for agents all day and then not getting anything back. So I was like, okay, let me package up this course with all the questions, take you from A through Z, including the compensation, because there is, I think, a lack of communication right now on how do agents get paid, right? From the architect, yeah. the contractor, how much do you get paid? What's fair for both parties and for best interests of the client? You know, how does everybody eat? And, and, and make it fair for everybody so right. that nobody takes advantage. And I think with Homeplex, with them having the flat fee model is what I really like. It doesn't drive up costs. It doesn't drive up incentives, intentions. You know, it's very black and white. You know, I'll pay you this much if you send me a client and they go through the motion and they go through this process. So I think I also appreciate that because you could have been, you know, the one to say, well, let's keep it all in-house and let's do it like this. Yeah. But you're like, you know what? this is not something that I really want to focus my time on. I'd rather spend my time on intentionally recruiting the right people, you know, feeding my current people and, you know, building their confidence and then kind of leverage the homeplex or the ADU play here on the side. But I have somebody that I can refer business to. Yeah. Yeah. No, and homeplex I think has figured it out and they, uh, uh, you know, provide an array of products, an array of different kinds of ADUs, whether it's a stick build, a module, right. a container, uh, and different parts of the United States now, and they're expanding. And, you know, again, I'm a student to what Ari's teaching, what he's doing, the network that you create is even valuable as well, because you get to do more business and help more people. And, you know, as long as, um, you know, like you said, you know, everyone's getting fed one way or another, I mean, you know, I'm not trying to be a one hit wonder where I, where I have this, you know, one great song and I'm a millionaire. Like, no, man, you know, I'm, I'm <laughs> right. in it for the long run, right? I'm in it to really help people and, and build relationships and, and get to know more people in our industry. So with Ari, 
at a home plex with you, uh, you know, doing the ADU play, it's just made me more valuable and it gives me the confidence to have a solid foundation. And as we know, you know, the, you know, the, the, the most important part of a home is a foundation. And once we build our solid foundation and that gives us referrals, it gives us credibility. People will now, you know, look at you in a different way. That's when, you know, the true success comes, right? Because then after a while, you're just helping people and the money comes, you know, and Danny was a big believer in this is like, you know, become a servant, go out and help as many people, you know, have that mentality because the money's going to come. Don't, don't, you know, don't start counting your, your chickens before they hatch, but go out there and, and, and pour yourself and be a genuine person that you truly want to help. And of course you're going to get paid for that. But how do you do that is when you understand that your time is valuable, you value it. Um, you know, understanding the cost over value mentality as well, because not everyone has that. Knowing how to vet people, whether it's uh, an agent, a home buyer or seller, a contractor, all of that, you know. So for me to have a more um, enjoyable life, I needed to align myself with yourself, with Ari, with Homeplex, in order to still be able to deliver to my agents, uh, deliver to my clients, and also be uh, an amazing husband, an amazing father, and have balance, right? That to me is success. That to me is being rich in life. To me, having a, a fat bank account, I mean, who doesn't want it, but that doesn't give you happiness or the richness that you want, right? And doing this, exactly. what we're doing, gives me happiness, honestly. And I know that it's not always easy because if it was always easy, then everyone would do it. And being an entrepreneur, you know, being a, a person who truly believes in yourself, it's it's not an easy task, you know. And once you can break away from the matrix and not be part of that environment, yes. and that's when, you know, shit really starts to happen and change. And, um, you know, I've been patiently, um, you know, guiding myself, uh, aligning myself with the right people and just wearing the right hats that I that I know that I love. And I know, and again, you know, my hats that I got, you know, are, are always very important to me because I really value that. And, um, and I know that I have to wear multiple hats, right? You know, it's like being, a, you know, a, one of my good mentors at Home Depot, when he promoted me to be a branch, uh, a, a manager of the entire store, um, that was the, the, I think that was one of the, the changings in my life. And you mentioned it earlier, like sometimes you don't want to get caught in that corporate world, get caught in a nine to five. When he finally decided to make me a store manager, which was an amazing uh, accomplishment for me, that's when I decided to quit. And I'm all like, man, thank you. Yes, I'm going to make, I think I was going to make like $60,000 a year, which back then. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, Whoa. But back then it was a lot of money. You know, I'm talking like, you know, early 90, right. 93. He's like, Gus, you're a jack of all trades and a king of none. And that's what I loved about you. And this is why I'm promoting you over people that have been in the company for 10 years. And I said, Tim, thank you so much, but I'm going to give you my resignation, you know, and I left and I, 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 I bet it on myself. And that's when I went to take my career to corporate, but still within the same industry because I wanted to right. grow. I think I think I took everything that I needed to take when I worked at Home Depot. And I think that mentality has helped me to get where I'm at now, you know. I, I and I'm sure the um, the corporate world, believe it or not, it's crazy because we 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 escaped the corporate world. Yeah. But I think now in running a business, right? I, I don't have a huge team, but I have like a VA and a couple uh, agents. I use a lot of the corporate, <laughs> the corporate systems, SOPs, and procedures that you know I can implement in the business the now. The structure. Yeah, 100 yeah. percent. The structure really helped me. So we had to live through that in order to be where we're at now. And I I definitely res I already respected you and I respect you even more now knowing your story and, you know, all the challenges that you've had to overcome, because I'd say, you know, everything that you talked about, it sounded nice, you know, like every two years I want to grow every two years. I want to challenge myself, but I can only imagine the self-talk you know, and the breakthroughs that had to happen for that to happen for you, you know? So it's not as easy. Um, no. A lot of us get stuck in that fear-based mentality and very few of us actually go and switch from fear-based to faith-based, you know, yeah. and, and really like uh, make that shift. And for me, 100% agree with what you said. It's about surrounding myself with people like you who 
pour into me and we pour into each other and we kind of, we're sort of like a mirror. Danny talks about this, you know, yeah. many times will attract the people that you're sort of in alignment with as far as your frequency. And I feel like when I connect with people like you, like Ari and a lot of the people that are in my circle right now of my life, it's all people that are mirroring saying, yes, you can do this. Yes, the keep growing. Yes, keep doing that. It's not anybody in my life right now that's like, oh, maybe you shouldn't do that or giving me some self-doubt. You know, I've, I've kind of filtered a lot of those people out of my life and it's helped me think better, be clear and not question, you know, my path. And, and even yeah. to this day, if I have limited beliefs. I call myself out. You know, I call it um, hood Steph and healed Steph. <laughs> so every day I have to struggle with both. And, you know, I appreciate both because they both got their own perspective. Yeah, yeah. In the middle, like, <laughs> you guys going to go at it today? <laughs> it's funny that you say that because my, my wife tells me the same thing sometimes. Like, is is this like uh, 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 the good guys or Mr. Hood guys, you know? Because, <laughs> right. But, but I go, it's a little bit of both, right? It's like it's like I told you, you know, it's the whole uh, Mamba mentality, right? You got to yes, be a hero yes. and a villain sometimes. And, and yeah. but you got to be able to listen to both and then make a, a, you know, a rational decision what's best for you, for your family, and for the people around you, right? Because it's you're, a, you're like, you're the ref now in the middle. You know, once you become the <laughs> you can Completely. read both old Gus and new Gus. And it's funny because we both said hood, you know, hood Gus or hood <laughs> Steph. And so I say hood Steph and heel Steph. I come from the hood too, people. honey, trust me. And it's, uh, you know, you you know, the school of Knox taught me a lot as well. I, I'm not going to well, lie. Here. You know, yeah. my, for me, my education was the corporate world. I did do, I got my AA in business economics, but more of my education, I took it from my corporate world. You know, I took advantage of Wells Fargo and did a lot of coachings and trainings. I did a lot of that when I was with Danny Morell because, you know, you're constantly growing and the, the university is real life, like hands on. That's the best right. way to learn, you know, and um, that is the best way to learn, 100%. It is. Well, it thank is. you so much, Gus. I really appreciate your time. You. you know, we were going to be on here. I told them 30 minutes, guys, and we're over an hour. I oh, mean, damn, I, told you guys, <laughs> I, told, I told you guys that's how much value we were going to give today. So I hope that a lot of what we talked about resonated with some of you. If you're thinking about joining a brokerage, reach out to Gus. Thank if you, you want to learn about the ADU play, tap into our community. You know, I have the ADU play community. We also have monthly calls with Homeplex. Um, there's just so many resources that we can connect you to. All you have to do is reach out. And I think sometimes people are scared to reach out because you guys think that one, we're unapproachable or two, we're not, you know, we're not going to answer. It's nothing like that. If, if you reach out to successful people, those are the ones that are the most giving. The yeah. ones that don't want to give you their time of day is because they're probably struggling with their own, you know, on their own journey. So we'll leave it at that. Any closing thoughts, Gus? Thank you again. Um, you know, what? just thank you so much for uh, giving me this time, you know, to be on the podcast. You know, I'm really looking forward, you know, to growing with you, growing with Homeplex as well. And, you know, just... Uh, becoming tighter in our environment because I think right now as realtors in this industry are we, we got to be more allies than foes you know and a lot of people in our industry sometimes see U.S. competition and I see us as a team you know and if we come together a lot more we can help more people we can do more deals and do the right thing so thank you again Stephanie I really appreciate the time and um you know, the continuous learnings that we have together. So thanks again. 100%. And a lot of more collaborations coming from both of us. I know we're going to be doing a lot of work together, uh, whether it's through deals or clients or ADU projects. But I see Gus and I working, you know, long term. We're both in it for the long run. So make sure you guys stay tuned in and we'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you.